I just started experimenting and throwing papers up in the air. I dropped them first a few times um, a long time ago, but I, I just started waving them out and doing well with it. Drug court was a big change in my life. The people at drug court were a big change in my life. I started to realize if I don't get high, I have money. I, I tried to buy jackets, right? Like, then I tried to find a baseball jacket. No such animal. Try to find a Seattle jacket. No such animal. And I decided to get creative. The reason why this is $23,000 in jackets is because the fact is that I know as soon as I relapse, I lose all that. I trade my jacket for a hundred dollars, okay, if I'm desperate enough. Yeah, and you don't want to go there. No. The positive attitude I have is not, nothing's ever perfect. You have to improvise. My first cab, taxi cab, I drove with yellow cab. I was a driver before I became a driver owner. 83 to 86. I had a video store. A video store never made a lot of money. My mom and I, what I would do is I'd work two jobs. I would sleep in the closet in my video store, but I didn't report that to the IRS. <laughs> I, I look this way, I, I sleep in the closet. I had a shower, so it wasn't that bad. It was fun. I only had like 2,000 movies. I have over 10,000 VHS movies. I don't know, when I was growing up, I didn't think, shoot, this is what I want in my future. I want to be a real change vendor. That's not what I was thinking. <laughs> but <laughs> it just happened that way. And I try to try to always have a positive outlook because things happen for a reason. There's quite a few people that say hi to me, to talk to me. You know, uh, they're they're very important in my life. It's, it's, it's more than just money. I work at it, you know. I always keep motivated. I can't feel sorry for myself. We got people in wheelchairs, one leg. You got to look at all the people that are worse off than me. You know, and when you have that perception, a lot of real change vendors, I mean, I smile more than more, more most real change vendors, and they got more teeth than I do, but, <laughs> but I still smile, <laughs> you know, but I love it. This being out there is my favorite thing, but, you know, I have to have traffic, I have to have cars moving, I have to have cars going up the wrong turn, wrong way, it's, it's energy. The buses, the people. I'd be bored if I had to stand at Safeway because there's no traffic. I could be on 4th Avenue, it's not as fun. You know, it's kind of funny when you see all this commotion going on on 3rd Avenue that you won't see anywhere else. You know, you have fun. Some days are harder than others, but that goes with the territory. You know, it's a great place. I love going to Bellevue College. It's a lot of work, but you know what, I got I live like a king. It's actually better than anything I can think of. I know a lot more people doing this. It's less responsibility than being a cowboy for crying out. <laughs> it's fun. There's a lot of people I talk to that don't buy the paper for me too. You know, they're fun to talk to. They're great people. You know, I don't really hang out with anybody because I'm too busy with Bellevue College. And, you know, I'm almost too busy to watch movies. School is wonderful. You got more of a tradition at Bellevue College. More friendly, more people trying to really do something with their lives. It helps me keep motivated with a, with a lot of friendly people. I have a few favorites, you know, some of my attorney friends, some of the people I've really talked to on Aurora, Denny. You know, a lot of people ignore me. You know, you can't do nothing about it, you know. They think because they're just a real chain vendor that you're a nobody. You know, so, but that's their loss. You know, I'm lucky to be here. I'm one of the best, but I'm not the best. <laughs> but I speak the truth. That's the key. <laughs> nothing else can happen than you. <laughs> you know, I don't say I'm the best. I say I'm one of the best, but I don't say I'm the best. And the reason why I'm one of the best is because you, and other people make me the best. Not you guys, I'm not one of the best. That's how I got to look at it. I'm honored to be a gold vendor of the year with Princess Sullivan. She is a great vendor. I think she's a really cool person. She has a lot of knowledge that a lot of people can learn from her. You know, even though I thought I should have been vendor of the year years ago, 
this is actually the perfect time for me to be vet of the year because I get to be with a special person. Um, she's more humble than I am. <laughs> We're real change is lucky to have a person like that. She's always fun to talk to. She does a lot of great things for real change. She's one of the best great best real chain vendors out there. Really one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life was start selling real change. Because I've always had, you know, a regular nine to five job. I've had good jobs with benefits have a strong work ethic. It was really hard. I remember the first day trying to sell real change and it was like I needed a, a universal kick in the butt to get up there and to actually hold this paper and say, I'm vulnerable, I need help. And that's really hard because I've always been able to take care of myself. You know, after a few, few months, three or four months, you start developing relationships and talking to the same people and getting to know what's going on in their lives and them taking interest in what's going on in my life. You meet different people every day. You have regular customers, but I'm down there by the metro, and I get to meet a lot of people traveling. I've had people purchase the paper from Turkey, from England, from Germany. I've had people that, without even speaking a word to me, understand what the paper represents because they have it in their own culture. They purchase the paper and they know what it's going you know, where it's going and how it's supporting the homeless and low income. The best part of the job is to, to experience the kindness. Their kindness can be so unexpected. It really, really, really is it's really challenging. But once you get going, once you get going and really establish relationships, it's the most rewarding part of the job is really... I think that's one of the things that's missing right now. With all this technology and all the texting and all the, you know, Facebooks and all this, people forget just to have a small town chat. Yeah. How are you doing today? And just having that small exchange. Yeah. I always feel better. Always feel better when I have yeah. a positive exchange. It can carry me for hours. <laughs> me too. I, I'll ride the wave day. for hours. Oh, that's it. I'll ride yeah. the wave. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I remember having a conversation with one of my customers, a female customer, and she would buy the paper two, three times a week. And one day I asked her, I said, I noticed that you're buying the paper several times a week, and I, I do appreciate it. And she straight out just said to me, because I realized I could be you. She realized that under the right circumstances, or the certain circumstances, the tables could be turned, and she could be on, on the other end. And she recognized that she she could be in my position. And she told me that she leaves the paper in different places, hoping that people will just subtly pick up the message of real change. It was really satisfying for someone to have that sort of insight, because I think I am an example that this can happen to anyone. You know, my circumstances, you know, I, put, I always had a job, and I was always into, fiercely independent. In fact, and I put all my savings into a cafe that didn't succeed. So it was really important for me to do whatever it takes to get back on my feet again, and real change was an opportunity for me to do that. And also, I really fell in love with the product. It's reporting the things that mainstream ma media are not covering, and I think that the creative team here the writers. I just think they put together a good quality newspaper. So it became easier for me to actually sell the paper. And then I became very involved. I joined the editorial committee. I am a vendor rep which supports other vendors and, and assists with the appeal process. I'm also on the board of directors. So no matter where my career path may take me, I'm always going to stay involved with the organization. And I got an idea one day, wouldn't it be a great idea to actually interview some of these customers, interview these readers, and see what their ideas are about mm -hmm. solving homelessness. But also, mm -hmm. let's get to know who these people are that really are the backbone of Real Change, They're the ones that are purchasing this product. It has given me huge satisfaction. 
there's something backwards about our society that we, there's nothing wrong with entertainment. But when it becomes more important than finding housing for our own people, there's almost 3,000 people that we know of with the street counts that don't have any housing. And whether they're drinking or not drinking, I just think, out of just human respect or respect for another, you know, for another person is that we need to get them housing, get them off the street. One of my other customers, he said that, he goes, it doesn't matter whether they're drinking or not. Wouldn't it still be better to get them from under the bridges and off the streets? And I think just the most basic thing that we can do is just find people housing. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to walk through Pioneer Square every morning and see at least eight, ten people sleeping there while I'm on my, my way to sell real change. I think this is the message, uh, not the message, but this is a question I ask myself. You know, what would love do? It's so basic, but what would love do? And what would, what would God do? I mean, it's really tough. What keeps me going is I feel like I'm spreading a powerful message. I, I really, truly believe in and the message behind Real Change and the stories that they cover. I believe that mainstream media, they're only reporting the stories that are going to make us more fearful, but they're not sharing stories that are going to solve any of our city's problems. But Real Change is talking about, about ways that you can engage and get involved in the community. The, the people at Zeitgeist embrace me, the whole staff, they're like a second family to me. All of the baristas there, they always say hello, they, they chat with me, they buy me a cup of coffee, um, as well as the, the actual customers. How does it feel to share Vendor of the Year with Willie? I'm actually thrilled. I really am thrilled. I think he was a good choice. Yeah. You know, I, his story, is, it's a success story. Five years sober, you know, he's making a living out of it, he's doing really well, um, he's hard working at it, but he's also involved with advocacy work, and that's one of the, the little sidebars that, he, that he's involved in is the advocacy piece, and I think the common thread with all real change vendors is that they mm -hmm. have a fighting spirit, and they're not taking the easy way out, they're not sitting around in shelters, you know, waiting for their next meal. They're really putting themselves out there and really trying to, to make some money and to do the right thing. They're not trying to take advantage of the system. Honestly, I don't think I would have stuck around real change as long as I did. Mm -hmm. But what I truly found here was family. The staff, the volunteers here are very present people. I've personally had vendors um, offer me jackets. Even uh, Willie, he, he's given me a phone card you know, out of the kindness of his heart. So a lot of people here, they do feel like it's family. There is real love here. It's tough love sometimes, but it's real love. <laughs> right. You got the captain. Chris, you got, so Chris, you got the captain leading the ship here, yeah, baby. Yeah. Come here, sunshine. I got a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, the one thing, I guess the only thing I really want to, want to say is that after my experience briefly being homeless and getting back on my feet again, I cannot walk, even walk by anyone anymore. If I have an extra dollar, I will give them a dollar because I just don't think that anyone should go through the struggle of not having a place to sleep or, or something to eat on a daily basis. Please, 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 please